Yugi versus Bakura, the Battle City quarterfinals. Today, I want to analyze this duel, see if there was any mistakes made, if there were any better plays people could have made, or if there was any shenanigans that went down. Yeah, without further ado, let's just jump into the duel, shall we? The duel begins and Bakura goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of the portrait secret, the gross ghost of fled dreams, headless knight, dark necrophere, the dark door, and dark spirit of the silent. Bakura starts by summoning his portrait secret to the field in attack. Then he ends his turn. You'll notice that with all of the other cards that he had in his hand, this is not the most optimal play. This move and all the following moves he's about to make are all a part of his plan. However, they are all still misplays, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's just continue with the duel until it's important. It's Yugi's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, Magic Formula, Collected Power, Card Destruction, Defusion, and Exile of the Wicked. Yugi starts by summoning his Gazelle to the field, and then immediately enters his battle phase. He attacks the portrait secret. It is destroyed, and Bakura takes the first damage of the duel. Yugi sets his magic formula face down and ends his turn. It's Bakura's turn and he draws Dark Sanctuary. Despite its impressive 1,800 defense points, Bakura summons his gross ghost of fled dreams in attack mode. Bakura ends his turn. If you're wondering why he didn't activate Dark Sanctuary here, it's because Dark Sanctuary doesn't work unless Dark Necrophere is in the graveyard. This card is very different to the real life version if you're comparing it to that, but... We'll talk about it a bit later as well. It's back to Yugi, and he draws Gamma the Magnet Warrior. He summons it and enters his battle phase. He attacks first with Gamma, destroying the Gross Ghost. He then attacks directly with Gazelle. After the damage, Yugi ends his turn. It's Bakura's turn, and he draws Destiny Board. Bakura, yet again, makes an insane play. He summons his Headless Knight in attack mode, despite its 1700 defense. And yet again, Bakura simply ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Monster Reborn. Unable to summon any more monsters to go for game, Yugi attacks with Gamma to destroy Headless Knight. He then attacks directly with his Gazelle. Bakura is left with only a morsel of life points left. Yugi ends his turn. But wait a minute, yes, Observer viewers will have noticed. Yugi could have won this turn very easily. He has two choices for victory here. One, I'm just going to activate Monster Reborn, bring back one of those monsters of Bakura's I destroyed, and now just attack with all three monsters for game. Or scenario two, oh, I have this Exile of the Wicked spell card in my hand. Its effect lets me destroy all fiend monsters on the field. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll destroy Bakura's fiend monster on his side of the field, and then just attack with my other two monsters for game. I'm sure you're all asking, well, there's got to be a reason why you didn't do this play. Uh, there is. It's the plot. This is one of those situations where we're not really supposed to know Yugi has these cards in his hand. The show doesn't show you that he has them. Unless you reverse engineer the duel, that's how you know he has these cards in his hand. Unfortunately, the only reason he didn't use these plays is because Yugi would have won too quickly in the duel. So I'm going to have to say Yugi made a huge misplay right here. It's Bakura's turn and he draws Earthbound Spirit. Bakura finally reveals that Yuki has played right into his trap, as he wanted those monsters to go to the grave. Because now, with three fiend type monsters in his grave, he can banish all three to special summon his ace monster, Dark Necrophere. For those at home, this is what Dark Necrophere looks like in the dub, whereas in the sub, this is what she looks like. I don't think they liked the spooky baby, especially when it melts a bit later, but yeah, there you go. Now with a decent monster on the board, surely Bakura will attack and do some damage, right? Well, no. Instead, he sets his destiny board face down and Dark Spirit of the Silent and ends his turn. We're barely seven turns into this duel and we have so many misplays. Let's go through what Bakura did wrong, shall we? And see if we can explain it. First, why didn't he summon his monsters into defense to achieve this exact same result? Save him some life points. Well, Kaiba does answer this in the sub. He says Yugi might be hesitant to attack face down monsters, so he wouldn't be able to enact his plan. However, this is extremely flawed logic. Almost never in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh do people choose not to attack face down monsters or defense position monsters in fear of something bad that might happen. 
It happens every now and then, but it's so rare. So I don't buy this at all. So this is a misplay Bakura. Uh, bad play. So with this in mind, Bakura just might as well have played normally. Just summon some monsters into defense. It can beat over any monsters. Go for that instead. And then use Dark Necrophia as a backup plan. It's a much better play, really, isn't it? In fact, speaking of all of this as well, if Yugi would have drawn one more monster, which is very likely, I might add, Bakura would have lost. It's not like he's set in back row to keep himself safe. So if Yugi would have just drew literally anything with more than 450 attack points, this door would have been over right there and then. And then the final thing. Why didn't Bakura attack with Dark Necrophia and at least destroy one of Yugi's monsters? Well, the reason that he's done that is because he's going to do a play in a minute with Dark Sanctuary to get a spooky ghost on the field. That spooky ghost is going to possess one monster on Yugi's side of the field, but Yugi won't know which one it is. With more monsters on the field, it will make it harder for Yugi to deduce which monster is possessed and theoretically should result in him attacking himself instead. And while I don't personally agree with that, because if you've got two monsters on the field, it's literally 50-50. Whereas if you've got three, it's also less likely for him to choose the one with the ghost in. I don't know. It feels like bad logic as well. Oh, but wait a minute. There was one more misplay. The biggest one of them all. Bakura had Destiny Board last turn. He didn't set it last turn and then activate it this turn. Why did he do that? Why didn't he just do it last turn? Well, this is an easy one again to answer. The plot. Because if Bakura would have set that card face down, uh, he would have won. Yeah. If I have to give him a defense for why he didn't do it, he didn't set it face down so that Yugi was guaranteed to attack his monster. He wouldn't be hesitant. But I think that's silly. <laughs> he might as well have just set it. So, yeah. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Dark Magician Girl. He tributes his gazelle to summon it, and then activates his face down equip spell Magic Formula. This raises the attack of Dark Magician Girl by 500. Now with enough attack points, Yugi enters his battle phase and destroys Dark Necrophia. This leaves Bakura with a mere 150 life points left. However, Bakura reveals this too was all part of his plan. Since now Dark Necrophia has been sent to the graveyard, he can activate its effect, which lets him immediately activate the field spell Dark Sanctuary from his hand, deck, or grave. Since it is in his hand, it activates straight from there. Now, while this field spell is active, Bakura can select one monster on Yugi's field and equip it with the Ghost of the Dark Sanctuary. The monster equipped is not revealed to the opponent. If the opponent declares an attack with a monster equipped with a ghost, then the attack is negated. And half of that monster's attack is dealt as damage to Yugi, while half is added to Bakura's life points. During each of the opponent's standby phases, he can choose a new monster to equip the Ghost of Dark Sanctuary too. And that's not all this card does. While Dark Sanctuary is face up on the field, Bakura can use his monster zones for his spell and trap card zones as well. However, to keep this card on the field, Bakura must tribute one monster during each of his turns. And if Dark Necrophia is not in the graveyard, then this card will destroy itself. With all that in mind, Yugi attacks directly with his Gamma, attempting to go for game. However, it is revealed it was the one possessed by the ghost. And so, the attack is negated. Yugi takes half of Gamma's attack as damage, while Bakura gains that much instead. Yugi ends his turn. I hate to do this because this is a Captain Hindsight kind of moment. Technically, you would only know to do this play if you knew what Dark Necrophir was about to do. However, in another moment where Yugi could have won the duel here because he's got Exile of the Wicked in his hand, which destroys all fiend type monsters on the field. If Yugi would have just summoned his Dark Magician Girl, activate this spell, destroy Dark Necrophir, Dark Necrophir's shenanigans would have gone off. He would have put the spooky ghost into Dark Magician Girl. As long as he didn't equip that Dark Magician Girl with the spell card, he could have attacked directly with Dark Magician Girl. The attack would have been redirected back to him. He would have taken damage. Bakura would have gained life points. However, with the Gazelle with 1500 attack, he could then attack directly for game. It's Bakura's turn and he draws his second copy of Dark Spirit of the Silent. Bakura starts by activating Destiny Board. Due to its effect during each of Yugi's end phases, Destiny Board will activate a new spirit message from Bakura's deck. When four of Yugi's turns pass, it will spell either final or death, depending on if you watch the double the sub. And when that happens, Bakura will instantly win the duel. And yes, we covered it a little bit earlier, but had Bakura activated this two turns ago, he would have three letters, F, 
I N so far on the board, meaning in two more turns, he'd win the duel. And fun fact, had he done that, Yugi would have absolutely no way of stopping this play. Oh well. Anyway, Bakura activates the Dark Door, making it so that both players can only attack with one monster each turn. Bakura summons his Earthbound Spirit and immediately sacrifices it to Dark Sanctuary to stay on the field. He sets one of his Dark Spirit of the Silent Face down and ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Karibo. The standby phase occurs and Bakura equips his Ghost to Dark Magician Girl. Yugi summons Karibo to the field in defense. At this point, Bakura hasn't explained to Yugi the full effects of Dark Sanctuary. And so, thinking that the ghost is only possessing Gamma, Yugi attempts to attack directly with Dark Magician Girl. However, this is where Bakura reveals he moved the ghost into her instead. And so, the attack backfires, and Yugi's life points decrease, while Bakura's increase. And following this, due to the Dark Door, Yugi can't declare another attack and so is forced to end his turn. As he does, Destiny Board activates. Spirit Message I is placed from his deck onto the field. Fun fact, by the way, in real world tournaments, if your opponent asks, you have to show them your card so they can know what your card does. Obviously in the anime, they don't really do this. They just tend to explain the card after the fact kind of thing for dramatic effect. Now I'm gonna give Bakura a misplay here because if you don't actually have to explain your cards to your opponent in a duel, Bakura should just never told Yugi what this card does and he might have been under the pressure that all of his monsters were possessed and if any of them attacked he would take damage back so this would have made him not want to attack not guaranteed but possible so I'm gonna give that a misplay to Bakura he should have kept it to himself I guess it's Bakura's turn and he draws Sangan he summons it and immediately tributes it for Dark Sanctuary. Sangan's effect then activates, allowing Bakura to add a monster with 1500 or less attack from his deck straight to his hand. He adds Dark King of the Abyss. Bakura ends his turn. Just gonna throw it out there, Bakura should have absolutely attacked and destroyed Karibo. I'm pretty sure he knows that Slife of the Sky Dragon is in Yugi's deck. Yugi needs three monsters on the field to summon it. At the very least, just get rid of Karibo for now and then he can just tribute it afterwards same result but one less monster for Yugi. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Big Shield Gardener. The standby phase occurs and Bakura chooses to equip the ghost onto Dark Magician Girl again. Yugi summons his Big Shield Gardener to the field into defense. Now with full knowledge of how Dark Sanctuary works Yugi chooses to attack with Gamma. The choice was correct and the attack is successful. However, Bakura activates his trap, Dark Spirit of the Silent. Due to its effect, he can negate an attack and instead select another monster and force that monster to attack instead. Bakura chooses Dark Magician Girl. She attacks and since she was possessed, Yugi is dealt the damage and Bakura's life points increase yet again. Yugi sets his collected power and Monster Reborn face down and ends his turn. As he does, Destiny Board plays Spirit Message N from his deck. And right here is the moment where Destiny Board would have won in the duel had he activated it two turns prior. So there you go. Last more mention of it now. It's back to Bakura and he draws Souls of the Forgotten. He summons it and sacrifices it for Dark Sanctuary. And then he ends his turn. Bakura should have attacked over Karibo because Yugi's next play uh, is pretty much going to cost him the duel. So had he destroyed that Karibo, maybe things would have been different. What am I talking about? Yes, it would have been different. He would have used Collected Power. He'd have to have used it on his Big Shield Gardener. He wouldn't have been able to destroy his Big Shield Gardener. So he wouldn't be able to get the Spooky Ghost off of the field. So it's, it's bad play. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Berthamet. During his standby phase, Bakura equips his Ghost onto Dark Magician Girl again. However, Yugi activates his face down Collected Power. This equips all equip cards onto Karibo. Since the evil Ghost of Dark Sanctuary is classed as an equip spell, it too is equipped to Karibo. Following this play, Yugi activates his Exile of the Wicked. This card destroys all theme type monsters on the field. The only card this applies to is Karibo. And since it was equipped with the Ghost of Dark Sanctuary, it is removed from the field. However, it will return during the next turn. Realizing this, Yugi plays his other face down, Monster Reborn. He targets Bakura's Dark Necrophir and special summons it to his side of the field. Now with Dark Necrophir not in the grave, Dark Sanctuary is destroyed. Yugi attacks with Dark Necrophir. Yugi ends his turn, and as he does, Destiny Board activates Spirit Message A from his deck. However, without Dark Sanctuary, there is no space left to activate the final Spirit Message during Yugi's next end phase. It's Bakura's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. 
He draws and gets Jogen the Spiritualist. He summons it to the field and activates its effect. Now, by discarding one random card in his hand, he can destroy all special summon monsters on the field. Akura discards Dark King of the Abyss. Dark Necrophere is destroyed, and since it was sent to the graveyard, its effect reactivates, replaying Dark Sanctuary to the field again. Akura then sacrifices his Jogen to keep Dark Sanctuary on the field. He then sets his Dark Spirit of the Silent face down in one of his monster zones, and ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and the final turn of the duel. He needs to draw well because if he doesn't win this turn he will lose during his end phase. Yugi with all of his will and might draws his Egyptian god card Slifer the Sky Dragon. He tributes his Gamma, Dark Magician Girl and Big Shield Gardener to summon it. We get one of the best summoning animations in the entire series here and then Thanks to Slifer's effect, it gains 1,000 attack for every card in his hand. Since he has three cards in his hand, Card Destruction, Defusion, and Berthamet, it gains 3,000 attack. But Korra does a little bit of shenanigans here. He selects Slifer as the target for the Ghost of the Dark Sanctuary to equip to, despite the fact he's only supposed to do that during the standby phase, but we'll let it slide because the move fails anyway, as Egyptian God cards cannot be tributed, equipped, or be taken control of while on the field. Marik rolls his eyes at Bakura for even attempting to do this. Clearly, he should have watched my The True Effects of the Egyptian God Cards video. Shameless self-plug, I'm sorry. Anyway, Yugi attacks the game. We get a bit more out of dual shenanigans here. Odeon appears, pretends to be Marek, pretends to transform Bakora back into his normal Bakora form so that Yugi will throw the duel because surely he wouldn't kill Bakora. I mean, I didn't realize this was a shadow game, but sure, Bakora's pretty weak and it's a god card, so okay, I'll buy it. However, to everyone's surprise, Yami Bakora refuses to do this. See, he repossesses Bakora and says he refuses to win like this and doesn't want to lose his host since he still has many plans. Yugi, now free to attack, obliterates the remainder of Bakura's life points. Yugi wins the duel. Overall, this was a very misplay heavy duel. Yugi could have won on turn 6, but the plot stopped him unfortunately. Bakura, he could have won on turn 12 with Destiny Board. However, yet again, the plot stopped him too. But yeah, that was the duel. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. But other than that, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye everyone.